Greetings everyone, I am Pavel Hayek and I will be the presenter of this contribution. Let me introduce a few things at first. Uh, we are facing the situation when the documentation of a movable culture property is very important for uh, preserving information for further or future generation. And we have been in the situation that we have moved from analog documentation to its electronic or digital form. And we are moving from 2D into the 3D realm as well. That's why the goal of this paper is the presentation of two methods uh, allowing uh, creating uh, relatively fast and sufficient high quality 3D documentation of movable culture properties uh, while taking into account not only time but also financial complexity of such uh, methods. And we choose two methods and we compare them uh, based on volumes of such 3D models uh, suitable for the documentation obtained through these methods. The first method we used uh, was uh, terrestrial laser scanning, and the second method was structure from motion method using non-measurement camera. The object of interest for us was this movable transport box, box of a light, uh, you can see uh, on the slide, while uh, we compared uh, the methods based on the volume of this uh, frustrum. So that's why we needed to cut the grips and locks uh, that have been scanned or uh, pictured uh, from the 3D model that was compared together. Few words about the methods themselves. The first one, uh, the terrestrial laser scanning, uh, for this one we used uh, Lake Canova Multistation. Uh, for acquiring the data for the scanning itself. And we had this uh, configuration for ground-based laser scanning, uh, which you can see on the right side. While the TPS-1 and TPS-2 are uh, two reflecting prisms that were used for stitching the particle laser scans uh, obtained from uh, S1, S2, and S3 uh, sites or places. Uh, while uh, the MeshLab software was used for uh, processing the point cloud itself and creating uh, the 3D model, which contained about 4,000 po points. The second method was used uh, for structure from motion and the camera we used was a camera on a mobile phone which is available uh, let's say freely and uh, mostly for most of us and uh, we used relatively old but functional Apple iPhone 4 and the software for processing the images was chosen the Agisa PhotoScan Metashape. Here you can see the directions and positions of the images taken of the object of interest, while the final model uh, from these images uh, contained about 5,000 points. So uh, the order of the magnitude is the same for both of the models or the methods. Uh, so we were able to compare them easily. While uh, the information or the attribute of the model we compared uh, was not the appearance or uh, something else, but the volume uh, of the object compared to the volume of the model. And uh, we knew the uh, analytically calculated volume uh, from the equation you can see up on the slide 
and uh, we calculated the volumes from the 3D models created from the point cloud via the laser scanning and from the images uh, using the structure from motion methodology. Uh, comparing the data, we can see that the analytically uh, calculated volume uh, is highlighted in bold in this table, uh, while we can compare the information from uh, laser scanning and structure from motion, and particularly laser scanning, we can uh, compare uh, two information. One is uh, the volume of the point cloud calculated directly in the uh, uh, MS50 uh, total station, and uh, the, the volume calculated from the 3D model uh, created in the mesh lab. Uh, while the volume is larger, while uh, the scanning contains no, not only the object of interest itself, but also the surroundings. And uh, we can see here that there are some uh, deviations uh, from the calculated uh, volume, uh, but uh, approximately it's about 1% of the volume, uh, while the worst is 1.14% uh, deviation, uh, which in our opinion uh, was caused due to the fact that the modeled object did not have a very rich texture in some places, and the quality of camera and the distortion uh, of the lenses uh, certainly played some role as well. And we can move to the discussion itself because uh, we found some advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, for the structured promotion method using a camera on a mobile phone. Uh, this method is very easy to use, very uh, fast uh, in acquiring the images. Uh, it's simple, you don't have to study hard <laughs> to use this method. And this uh, method allows us to uh, make 3D objects of very small objects of, uh, or objects in a very small uh, rooms, for example. But on the other hand, uh, the objects of interest have to have uh, rich, rich texture uh, when we have uh, these plaster busts, uh, glass or metal objects the 3D model is uh, not uh, good in a sense of uh, uh, how it looks. The disadvantages of these methods, uh, which have been drawn from our experiment, is the potentially lower accuracy of the resulting 3D model. While this accuracy is based on how the model is uh, uh, created in the modeling software, how it's separated from the ground where it stands, and so on. Uh, but uh, we counted this uh, as well, so we were able uh, to compare these 3D models based on the, their volumes. Uh, while the under disadvantages is uh, the computational requirements uh, of these uh, photographs taken, uh, while you have to post-process them to have a relatively complex and uh, complex 3D model of a high quality, because you can make a 3D model from structure from motion itself uh, through the mobile phone, but the output is uh, not of a high quality. Uh, I would say low quality. So we we incorporated here uh, the processing software of the images that created this uh, 3D model. While for the laser scanning, uh, we have found that the most uh, valuable advantage is the accuracy of data, uh, which is uh, relatively good 
even for long distances up to one kilometer. But uh, this method has, uh, from our perspective, for the creation of 3D documentation of movable culture properties, uh, a lot of disadvantages. Uh, for example, price of the laser scanner is not low. Uh, you have to have some degree of erudition uh, to uh, manipulate the, uh, this laser scanner. And uh, it's not suitable for scanning either small objects or uh, from a very close distance because uh, the minimum uh, focus length uh, of this device is uh, more than one meter. So you have to be uh, in a distance more than one meter from uh, or 1.5 meter uh, from the object of interest you want to scan. And uh, the visual quality of the resulting 3D model uh, generated from laser scanning alone uh, is not sufficient, uh, which you could find uh, on the resulting 3D models uh, presented several slides ago. And uh, while we uh, have this uh, information, we can conclude that we conducted an experiment uh, for the suitability of selected methods for collecting and processing 3D documentation of movable culture properties. And we compare these methods based on volumes uh, for uh, our object of interest. While we compare the analytically uh, measured volume and uh, the volume of 3D models created uh, from structure promotion and laser scanning methods. Uh, based on the evaluation of these techniques we used, uh, we found out that the laser scanning method, which is uh, well used and often used in the cultural uh, heritage properties, uh, that method can be uh, replaced uh, using structure from motion method, using commonly available hardware, cameras, uh, mobile phones, whatsoever, uh, where the object of uh, interest is either small or located in small spaces, and also where the excellent quality of the resulting 3D model is uh, required. But uh, we have some limitations uh, re regarding the uh, texture of these models as well. So uh, from this point, we are aware that there are scanning devices suitable for scanning small objects, which you can hold in your hand and move around the uh, object of interest and create a 3D model. Uh, but we do not possess any of such devices. so. Uh, we were able to incorporate on, uh, only two devices uh, we are in a position in our experiment. So uh, we are getting to the end of our presentation. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your attention. If you have questions, you can find more information uh, in our paper or you can email us as well. Thank you very much once again.